Thanks for joining us. I pray that you all remain safe and healthy where you are. And this time I ask you to hold our students and our teachers and our parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and caregivers and, and everybody and teachers and custodians and, and everybody who's involved with educating our students, please do pray for their health and well-being as they gear up to start the school year in just a few weeks. Life is such a, a wonderful gift that we have, but an even more amazing gift is our faith. The faith handed down to us by our ancestors in faith, the faith that we share with people in the world, and the faith that we will share with the people who come after us. Think about the gift of faith that others have given you this time. Right now, let's enjoy as MJ Montague and Joyce Grubb play We Gather Together. Kathy Meggerly, our Director of Discipleship, will pray with us in just a moment. Here at Trinity, we enter our time of prayer by breathing in the breath of life that God breathes into us. Breathing enables us to center ourselves in God and to lay aside our cares and concerns for just a time. Would you breathe with me for a minute? Breathe in the name of the Father. Breathe in the name of the Son, and breathe in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Father, thank you for the many blessings in our lives, for the gift of each new day, for the air we breathe and the food that nourishes our bodies. Thank you for the gift of family and of friends that support and love us. Thank you for giving us the heroes of old, the prophets and martyrs who faced all types of adversity and persecution to follow their faith, who heard your call and bravely followed. Thank you for the gift of your faithful servants who worked diligently within the body of Christ, who are the backbone of your church, those who have been called to serve the poor and help the needy, for those who have been called to spread your message of love and kindness. Thank you for bringing these faithful servants into our lives, for those who took us under their wing of protection and love, for those who are willing to instruct us in the lessons of life, and for those who kept us from straying from a sin of life and depravity, for those servants who taught us about your son Jesus and his gift of forgiveness, and how we are all worthy of your love and grace. Come, Holy Spirit, and lead us, that we may be ready to answer our Father's call, that we may be willing to accept the mantle and receive
responsibility being placed before us, acknowledging it that it is our time to become faithful servants. May we go forward in service, depending entirely on the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us. May we share the extravagance of the gospel everywhere we go and to everyone we meet, loving others as Jesus has loved us. Help us to remember that the tiniest seeds become the tallest trees, that the seeds that we plant today will become the shade of tomorrow, and that the faith of right now becomes the future of your everlasting kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. A few weeks ago, I shared with you that uh, my dad died of liver cancer. His illness lasted a few months. And during that time, we watched a lot of old black and white movies with subtitles. We talked about a lot of things. I gave him a shave on Sunday mornings, and I sure did hold his hand a lot. At one point, I asked him if he had any advice, guidance, words of wisdom for me. And for the life of me, I don't really remember what he said. It could have been something like, find what you like doing and, and do that. But two words stay with me to this day. Learn photography. See, taking pictures was my dad's passion. It, would, it, it was his lifelong, lifelong joy. And <clears throat> he carried this Bronica with him wherever he went. This thing has literally been all over the world and taken pictures of, of people from all over the world. And then he would take the film home and he'd develop the film himself and he'd el enlarge his photographs in a dark room that he had built in his bathroom. Photography is something that he loved and, and he shared with me. I spent hours watching him work. And as soon as I was old enough to wield a camera, my dad gave me this, this Pentax with two lenses, a 200 millimeter telephoto and a, and a 50 millimeter wide angle. It's something I love doing, but then once I started working in my career, I kind of put it down. And so my dad told me, learn photography. He reminded me to pick it back up again. Now, all of this said, my introduction to photography that my dad gave me equipped me for my career in television. Photography enabled me to compose for depth, to think in pictures, and to look for those details and the moments and expressions that people might not ordinarily notice. And now, in the midst of this pandemic, I find myself using the skills my dad shared with me all those decades ago. Isn't it amazing how the interests and the passions and the gifts people give us can wind up shaping our lives, even decades later? And what of gifts that are even grander than photography? like our faith. How do we express our gratitude for the people who gifted us with the faith we have? Well, here's a suggestion. Maybe we could try living into the faith that we've been given. How about we share the faith that has been such a great gift to our lives with other people. It's kind of like the spirit, the mantle that the prophet Elijah leaves for his protege, Elisha. Elijah's work may come to an end, but God's work never ends. It's on us to take up the work that God has given others and make it our own and do it ourselves. Let's honor those who have gifted us with our faith by sharing God's love with the world. 
Over the last two months, we've been reading about the life and ministry of Elijah, one of Israel's greatest prophets, and what a life he leads. He first warns the evil king Ahab of a coming drought, and then he flees to live in the wilderness as a fugitive, and then he lives as, as an exile of sorts in the household of a foreign widow. He returns, and he defeats and destroys the prophets of Baal. And then he finds himself on the run again, and he flees to Mount Horeb, where he encounters God. It's the same mountain where Moses, before him, encounters God. And then he calls Elisha into the service of God to take up the ministry alongside him. Well, this time we read about Elijah's ascension into heaven. The two prophets do a, a farewell tour, if you will, visiting a few cities. And, and in every place that they visit, the local prophets remind Elisha that, that Elijah, his master, is about to be taken from him. And man, Elisha just doesn't want to hear it. And finally, they come to the banks of the River Jordan, again, where Moses died. And Elijah strikes the water with his mantle, and the waters part like the Red Sea. And the prophets cross over on dry ground. And what comes next, I think, would look really awesome on the big screen. Okay, let's hear 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 9 through 14. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha, kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and the other, and Elisha went over. A double share of your spirit. Now, in the earlier years when I read this story, I was so impressed with Elisha's request. I mean, wow, man, he wants twice as much spirit as Elijah. I mean, that's a lot of spiritual power. Maybe it's a little more than one person can handle. But I recently learned that what Elisha seems to be after here is the eldest son's share of Elijah's spirit, which is twice what everyone else in the family might get. It kind of reminds me of that story of the sons of Zebedee in the Gospels, according to Matthew and Mark. Perhaps you remember the ones who, who asked Jesus if they can sit at his right hand and his left when he comes into his kingdom. Jesus asks if they can drink the, drink the cup that he's about to drink, and they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. And Jesus says it's not for him to give. Now, likewise, Elijah grants Elisha this wish conditionally. If Elisha can stand to witness his master being taken from him, his wish will be granted. If not, it will not. Then along come the chariots of fire and the horses of fire sweeping Elijah up, up, and away, and while Elisha watches and tears his clothes, Can you just imagine the sense of loss Elisha must have felt in that moment? 
You know, the day my dad died wasn't quite so dramatic. He left this world peacefully. But being there with him, standing next to him in his last moments and in the moments after, brought home a stark reality. The dad I knew and loved, the dad who taught me photography and so many other things, was gone. He would never take another picture with this Bronica again. He left the art of painting with light to me. Kind of like Elijah leaving his mantle behind for his son in faith, Elisha. Elijah's work may come to an end, but God's work never ends, and it is on Elisha and us to take up God's work in the time we have. And like Elisha, asking for the lion's share of Elijah's spirit, I pray that we all grow in our love of God and neighbor through our daily practice of prayer and reading the Bible and doing some kind of something to express God's love for our neighbors. Like Elisha, let's remember the spiritual gifts that other people have given us, gifts that have helped us to grow in the love of God. It could be an object of some sort, or it could be a skill someone taught us, or a nugget of wisdom. It could be an experience someone shared with us. Let's think about these things, and let's cherish them and treasure them in our hearts. But then, whatever gifts we have been, we have been given, let's use those gifts to express God's love for this world in our time. The greatest gift that we have as a people of faith is forgiveness and eternal life with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is a gift that's been handed down to us by our ancestors in faith, and it is a gift that we share with people now all over the world, the entire body of Christ all around this planet. And it is a gift that we will share with those who come to believe after us. This is a timeless gift which we share with so many people. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when their supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we share in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a sharing in eternal life shared with people all over the world. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. God, we thank you for every blessing that we have in life. Especially we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world and showed us how to love and how to heal and how to bring back the lost and how to live an eternal life in love with you. And he gave himself up as a sacrifice, an offering that restores our relationship with you. And for this, we are so grateful. 
and you raised him up as a sign of, of eternal life and love with all the company of heaven and all the body of Christ for all time. God, in gratitude for this ultimate, amazing gift, we now offer you the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go and share God's gift of love with the world. See you next time. Amen.